packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. So, sit back and enjoy my delicious, simple suppers. One of my essential mantras for becoming a better cook is it's all about building your confidence. And the way to do that is with practice. The key is to have a repertoire of easy dishes you want to cook and eat time and time again. And soon, you'll be on your way to becoming a kitchen demon. My first dish keeps it simple, but delivers big time on flavor. So, it's sure to become a regular quick supper fix. Spicy tuna fish cakes. I love this recipe. Why? Because it turns this humble ingredient, a can of tuna, into something delicious. Just open up and drain the tuna into a sieve. Just slightly flake that. Don't press it too hard, otherwise you'll dry out the tuna. Now, these are water chestnuts. Just slice them nice and thin. You can buy them anywhere, any supermarket. Chestnuts in. Fresh ginger. Get rid of that rough skin on the outside. By grating the ginger, you get to get all that really nice sort of juice in. Take your spring onions and just slice on an angle. I like the texture of the water chestnut with a spring onion. A touch of fresh coriander. Lovely. Next, remove the seeds from a chili to reduce its heat without losing any flavor and finely chop. Chilies in. Kaffir lime leaves. Roll them up nice and tight. Run your knife down the center once and just chop. And that makes the fish cake nice and fragrant. Touch of salt, touch of pepper. Fish sauce. Just lightly season the tuna to bind all those wonderful ingredients. Two whole eggs. And give that a nice little whisk. And then add your eggs. Get your hands in there and start mixing. Mm. Get the mixture, roll it from hand to hand with the palm, pat them down nicely. To cook, add a little ground oil to a hot pan. Like the face of a clock, we're gonna go from 12 all the way around. First one in. These fish cakes only take a few minutes to cook, so keeping track of the order they go in the pan means you know which one to turn first. Give the pan a nice, gentle little shake. Make sure that nothing's sticking to the bottom. Spatula, two fingers on top, turn them over. Beautiful. That crackling noise is something you always want because the tuna's already cooked, so we just lightly fry them to get the nice crisp outside and gently take them out. They smell incredible. Let them sit there. We're going to make a really nice, delicious, simple dipping sauce. Start off a little pinch of sugar. Fish sauce, two tablespoons. That gives it the saltiness. One tablespoon of rice wine vinegar and some fresh lime juice. Squeeze all that lime in there. Your fresh coriander. Lots of coriander. And in. Give that a little mix. And then you have the most amazing spicy tuna fish cakes. Who would have thought something as delicious as that can come out of a can? A simple supper in minutes that's so mouth-wateringly easy and delicious, you're guaranteed to cook it again and again. When it comes to simple cooking, there are two basic bits of kit I'm never without that will save you time and effort in the kitchen. A grater and a peeler. The swivel peeler, a stainless steel one. Absolutely incredible. It's almost like a lifesaver in the kitchen because they are so quick, so light. Swivel blade, so you've got so much more flexibility. You can actually go around the vegetable. And we call it a speed peeler in the professional kitchen because it does literally, absolutely, rapidly peels your vegetables. You have minimal waste. Good peelers cost from a couple of quid and are great for everything from peeling veg to finely slicing cheese and making shards of chocolate. A good comfortable grip and a sharp stainless steel blade ensures you'll always work fast. 
The box grater is another great versatile kitchen tool, and with its planes for coarse grating, fine grating, and super fine, as well as blades for slicing, it's perfect for everything from puring ginger and zesting lemons to shredding onions super small so they can caramelize in a flash, and be sure to get a solid handle to hold it firm. And it's got such volume inside, it doesn't crush anything up, so I always prefer to grate onto a tray or into a bowl so you don't have to move it again. Grating onto the board, you've always got to lift it up and place it in, so place the grater into a bowl and grate. Two simple but essential speedy bits of kit, guaranteed to make your life in the kitchen easier. Bread is a brilliant base for delicious, super-fast lunches and suppers. Here are three of my deliciously simple recipes that transform a humble bit of bread into a gastronomic treat. First up, flatbreads with fennel and feta. Add olive oil to a flatbread. Then place in a hot frying pan and toast until crisp and golden on both sides. These deliciously versatile breads are made without yeast and are available in good supermarkets and local Middle Eastern shops. Next, thinly slice fresh fennel and scatter over the toasted flatbread. Then, toast aromatic fennel seeds in a hot, dry pan and sprinkle on top. Crumble over wonderfully tangy feta cheese. Finish with a drizzle of sweet and sticky pomegranate molasses. Bread transformed before your eyes. Flatbreads with fennel and feta, simple, delicious, and ready to eat in minutes. My next recipe that turns a hunk of bread into a stunning dish is bruschetta with garlic, tomatoes, capers, and pecorino. Start by slicing a baguette diagonally to get a large surface area so it holds more of the delicious topping. Drizzle the bread with extra virgin olive oil, then place it oil side down onto a scorching hot griddle. When the bread is beautifully charred, remove and rub with a peeled clove of garlic, paying attention to the edges. Next, half sweet cherry tomatoes and rub the juices into the toasted garlic bread. Then simply crush on top. Next, slice and scatter over tangy caper berries and use a veg peeler to add shavings of salty pecorino cheese. Finally, Drizzle with extra virgin olive oil and add a twist of black pepper. Fantastic fresh flavors in the flash of a griddle pan. Toast has never tasted so good. Perfect for a simple light supper or an easy lunch. My next dish is a cannellini bean crostini with anchovy and olive oil. First, for the topping, heat olive oil in a frying pan. Add tin cannellini beans along with the juices. Once heated, gently mash the beans with a fork. Then add sliced black olives, roughly chopped parsley, and a splash of sherry vinegar. Season and leave on a gentle heat. Next, half a fresh ciabatta and splash with extra virgin olive oil. Heat a griddle pan until smoking and toast the bread oil side down, pressing it into the pan to char evenly. To serve, top the toasted chipata with a cannellini bean mixture and finish with chopped anchovies. Packed with bold flavors, so easy you can always make it blindfolded. Ready in under 10 minutes, but eaten in seconds. Three different breads, three fantastic recipes, proof that even when you're pressed for time, you can still eat like a king. Incredible. Welcome back to my ultimate cookery course. These are my perfect TV dinners. Next up, my guide to getting the best ingredients for your money. My shopping mantra is very simple. First, rely on your senses. Make sure whatever you're buying, it looks, smells, and really feels good. And if you get the chance to taste it before you buy it, then do it. Second is to recognize that knowledge is absolutely crucial. The more you know about where your ingredients are from and how they're produced, the better. So don't be scared, ask lots of questions 
and learn. And when you want a simple supper, herbs are perfect to use in your cooking. They add vibrancy and an amazing depth of flavour, and once you get the hang of them, they are so quick and simple to use. And one woman who really knows these chef's best friends is expert herb grower Lorraine Melton. I love herbs. I love the way you can cook with them. I love the smell of them. She's been growing an incredible array of herbs in the wet Cambridgeshire countryside for over 20 years and can smell a bay from a basil at 50 paces. We grow about 150 varieties of herbs. It's always interesting to grow new varieties, see what they taste like, see what they smell like. It gets a bit addictive after a while. Broadly speaking, you get harder herbs and softer herbs. Softer herbs are things like parsley, basil, rocket, coriander. We grow um, two main types of parsley. We've got flat leaf parsley and curly parsley. Flavour-wise, I think they're very similar, although a lot of people would say that the flat leaf parsley has got a stronger, more aromatic flavour. This is your common basil, sweet genovese. This is um, a purple variety called Reuben. We do Greek basil, Thai basil, holy basil. When you're looking for a basil, you want a bright, fresh basil, nice leaves, no blemishes, and nice, strong stems. It's got a lot of oils in it, and it's very strong smelling. It just tastes of summer, basil. Lorraine certainly knows her stuff, and she's right. Soft herbs are delicate, so for maximum flavor, always use them at the end of cooking, or simply add as they are to cold dishes. Here are my top five soft herbs that I could never live without. Basil, as Lorraine said, it comes in many types, all with an amazing sweet pungent flavor, great blitzed in pestos, sprinkled whole over mozzarella, and showing its versatility, it even makes a wonderful ice cream. Parsley, beautifully earthy and intensely fresh. Use both the leaves and the stem for great depth of flavor in savory dressing, soups, and salads. Coriander. For an amazing hint of citrus, often used in Thai dishes, coriander is perfect in curries and chutneys, but it bruises easily, so treat it with care. Tarragon, a staple of French cooking. This has long, soft green leaves and a distinct aniseed flavor, great with chicken or in rich, creamy sauces. Finally, chervil. Both mild and sweet, a perfect pairing with fish, an incredible mix simply with melted butter for a quick sauce. Those are my favorite soft herbs. What about the hard ones? The harder ones tend to be um, a more woody plant. Things like thyme, rosemary. You've got your common thyme, which is your ordinary, general, bog-standard cooking thyme. And then you've got things like lemon thyme. We do an orange thyme, which is actually one of my favourites. It smells like thyme, but it's got a deep, sort of musky scent as well, which is just going to give you a slightly different flavour in your dish. Hard herbs, like thyme, can take more intense cooking than soft herbs, so they're great in stews, roasts or pan frying. Choose the right one and you can add wonderful depth of flavour to your dishes. Here are my top five I use day in and day out. Rosemary, amazingly robust with great bittersweet green leaves. It's a classic paired with lamb, delicious sprinkled over speciality breads like focaccia or great as toppings for fruity sorbets. Lorraine's favourite, thyme, a heady aromatic pungent herb which adds delicious flavour to a Sunday roast. It's amazing with wild mushrooms and is perfect in marinades. Oregano, warm and full of delicious aromatic oils, a staple of great Italian dishes and perfect sprinkled on pizzas or in pasta sauces. Sage, a strong tasting herb with a deliciously bitter flavour, incredible in stuffings and with rich meats like pork or duck. Finally, bay, bittersweet and spicy. It's delicious simmered in soups, stocks and risottos, and just as good dried or fresh. Growing herbs is a lot easier than people think it is. On window boxes, in balconies, and it's great. You can just open your window, put your hand out and snip some off. When you're out looking for herbs, make sure they look nice and healthy, no blemishes, stems look strong. They should just spring back, so nice springy sort of herbs. Smell, obviously, is quite important. Not all things smell, but obviously, if you think it's one that's going to smell like lemon thyme, it should have a nice, fresh lemon scent. And obviously, the final one is taste. You can tip a bit off and taste your herbs, and you can see what they taste like then. Whether bought from a supermarket or picked from your window box, herbs are a great way to add fresh flavors to your dishes. Perfect for delicious, simple suppers. Even if you've got a super busy lifestyle, it doesn't mean missing out on delicious desserts. They just have to be simple to make. When it comes to cooking at home, puddings should always be a pleasure and never a chore. And homemade puds are 100% guaranteed to impress. My next recipe has only two main ingredients, but simplicity doesn't mean food can't taste out of this world. 
incredible griddle pineapple with spiced caramel. If you're making a dessert for one or two, it's got to be quick and easy. This sumptuous, delicious griddle pineapple fits the bill perfectly. The pineapple. A way of testing it's nice and ripe. The top of the leaves come out. Perfect, ready to go. Always cut a pineapple with a serrated edge knife. Slice off the bottom. Turn it back over and slice the top part. Now, keep that for later. Look at the core, the center of the pineapple, and slice down directly in half. Slice that in half. Take each quarter and slice them. It smells incredible. Lay it down flat and just slice that core off. So you've got this perfect sort of boat of pineapple. Slice underneath, but stop as you get right at the end. Slicing around the skin will make the pineapple easier to eat, but leaving it attached gives you more control as it cooks. Next, heat a griddle pan as hot as you can. Start off in the corner and push it down. So you really mark the pineapple. Two minutes on each side, and then just turn them. Really nice colour on there, like that. Beautiful. I'm going to sprinkle them with a little touch of sugar. It's going to glaze them. Now, slice the top. Take out these beautiful glazed slices of pineapple. Like that. Next up, the spice caramel. Now, start off with your pan. Nice and hot. Sprinkle four tablespoons of sugar in there. Just flatten it. Then add the seeds from a fresh vanilla pod. In a small dusting of Chinese fine spice. Never stir caramel. Let it sort of bubble and transform. Here she goes. Now I've got the colour I wanted. That's the perfect colour. Off with the gas. In with the butter. And then a couple of tablespoons of cream. Lovely. And then give that a little whisk. Add the rest of your cream. Nice. And just drip that spicy caramel over your pineapple. Mmm. Wow. Simple, elegant, and seriously impressive. Griddle pineapple with spiced caramel. A delicious treat all to yourself that tastes even better shared. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. First up, the proper way to chop fresh herbs to get maximum flavour. Chopping herbs, the secret is to chop them, not bruise them. Now, basil. This is a soft herb, so treat it with some respect. When people go mad chopping herbs, all the goodness comes out on the board. I want the goodness left inside the basil. Place them all inside one another with the largest leaf at the bottom, and it's almost like rolling a cigar. Large one at the bottom, small ones in the centre, and then look, place them down together, and just roll them nice and gently, don't bruise them. Step one, rolled, ready to slice. Sharp knife, imperative. Fingers tucked in. The bottom part of your knuckle is the guide between you and the herbs. That there stops you from cutting your finger. Really important to get comfortable with the knife and just practice rolling the knife across the board and relaxing that wrist. It's all in the wrist action. So, herbs up, fingernails tucked underneath, and just up and down, up and down. And there you have a chopped basil that's not bruised and smelling very fragrant. Right, coriander. So you get the bunch of coriander, hold it down, and just lightly shave the leaves off the stalks. Bunch them up together, and then just, again, let the knife do the work. Tuck the fingernails in, and just chop once, and once only. Don't hack it, just chop it. 
You can always identify when you've bruised the herb, when you've removed the herbs off the board, and there's a big green patch. Mmm, full of flavour, and none of the goodness is left on the chopping board. A great tip for using leftover herbs, simply chop finely, mix into butter, roll up in cling film and freeze. Then when you want a herby hit, cut into slices and melt over steaks, chicken or veg. Asparagus is great for a simple supper. To prepare, always remove the lower woody stem by gently bending, and the asparagus will snap at the perfect point. Then boil or steam and serve with a little of my herb butter. For a cracking soft boiled egg, simply place your egg in boiling water, add a splash of vinegar and cook for exactly eight minutes. Then plunge into ice water. The vinegar helps the shell peel off easily and the ice water stops the egg from cooking, giving you the perfect runny yolk. For fuss-free salad dressings, simply add the ingredients into a jam jar. Screw the lid on tightly and shake to combine in seconds. There's no need to wash up a whisk and the jar's ready-made to store any leftovers. Follow my ultimate cookery course, bursting with valuable lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking. <laughs>